I am so happy to be here, I gotta tell you. Uh, maybe, maybe just to share a few things about myself and why I'm so excited to be here. I've been with CR, I think I've been in the CR family, uh, at the end of this year, it'll be three years. Have loved every minute of it. It's an awesome company to be part of, and I love taking over the stewardship of the CR platform and its definition and strategy because I think I'm kind of wired a bit for the space. Um, you know, quality at speed just kind of comes naturally. And part of that came from doing 13 years of uh, enterprise speech IVR apps and web applications uh, for, for some of you, even, but for a lot of enterprises. So I kind of know what it's like to get things out the door. And getting to a quality spot often takes far too long, and so I was experiencing the, the pain that many of you all do. And I did a lot of work on, on you know, kind of trying to improve the, the quality of my team and the, the speed at which we can deliver, but it's, it's difficult without some assistance. So it's just wonderful to be able to kind of take over um, the CR platform. And you know, I think even my personal life kind of, kind of prepares me for and wires me for you know, this uh, you know, quality at speed. Um, in my weekend warrior sort of activities, uh, many of you don't know this, but I, I actually race sports cars and I've done road racing, endurance races, and I do this thing called autocrossing and run, run some road rallies and things like that. So there's a number of things about prior preparation and quality parts and quality preparation of the of the car and the driver, and it comes down to if you're going to ex you're going to have speed, you really need to have a lot of things working right, and you have to test it continuously, and you have to know what works and what doesn't work, and so all all of this stuff kind of feeds into a lot of what we're investing in in the Ciara platform, and the CX Assurance platform that we provide is is one that you know we're very proud of. There's a lot of hard work that's been done for many many years. Um, it is a platform with a lot of feature sets that are shared across uh, our three big business applications, which across the top velocity, using design-driven testing to do functional coverage, cruncher for performance testing, stressing the system until something breaks or even beyond, and then pr production monitoring with our Pulse applications. You can see there's a bunch of really exciting feature sets that we can apply to all three of these solutions and the, and the skills that you develop in one, you can leverage the other. Uh, very exciting piece of technology, and I must say that, that the engineering team is, does an incredible job at maintaining a high quality and scalable infrastructure to run all of this. But I want to talk to you about where we're taking the platform because that's incredibly important to me. And I think you know, preparing you for what's coming next is a lot of what has guided my thought in the last year. And the transformations that uh, I, I speak with you about, because I, I love talking to customers, by the way, so please come up and, and chat with me afterwards. But you know, I, I think the three big things, themes that, that we've been hearing and, and, and feel like we can uh, bring some help with is uh, the transformation to the cloud with contact centers, just like Amazon Connect, and Joe was talking about a minute ago, but there's a, a number of other platforms that we'd like to support. Um, of course, many of you are on the Agile and DevOps journey, and um, you know, uh, very few people actually, actually fully arrived and, and, and achieved completeness there, but it's you know, something that pays big, big dividends even when you're on the journey. And you see the numbers. The numbers are really compelling. It is worth transforming your entire organization. The people, the process, the technology, you know, the, the tooling, um, you know, we want to be part of that in, a, in, in every way. And so continued investment to help your transformation into the Agile and DevOps world is really important to us and fitting into the landscape of the other platforms. I'll get into that in a moment. But lastly, I think there's a lot of you who really want to achieve a, a real world-class customer experience. And it's difficult, even with your current customer experience as you define it today, it's difficult to have perfect quality, right? And there's things that always fail. Uh, it's about you know standing them back up and fixing things as they come up, and and it's about achieving you know a, a, a bump-free customer experience, and 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 then there's always these huge opportunities that come for that next generation, that 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 next new challenge of trying to do something, maybe switching into natural language, particularly um, uh, is is a problem spot we're looking at. Um, Chatbots are emerging. Um, you know, there's success in, in voice channels, but not necessarily as much in the digital channel in certain areas. And then other other areas where we're borrowing ideas from the digital channel world and applying them into voice assurance. So achieving a, a world-class customer experience is really important. But I want to dive into the first one, which is the cloud contact center.
or phenomena. You, you've seen, um, you know, the um, notion of, you know, forklift upgrades, and we've we've seen some some major expenses in, in in everybody's budget over the years in contact centers, and things are really really changing quickly. Not just in pricing models like Joe was talking about, but just the 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 skill set that you need, and and the way in which you approach focusing on making the customer experience uh, the best, right? So cloud contact centers, we think, are, are, are a huge part of the future, if not this year, maybe in a few years from now. But we want to be ready as Ciara to help you and accelerate your migration and make it uh, an awesome experience. Um, it's kind of five steps for a lot of customers. A lot of folks, um, and this is an example of uh, the, the typical thing of I want to reproduce my existing IVR and, and uh, agent routing experience in a cloud contact center. And migrating there requires um, you know, that uh, you replicate. Well, we can automatically document using our crawling, our IVR discovery technology. We can create a model for your entire IVR. You, you can uh, use our accelerators to import that design into a cloud platform like Genesis Pure, uh, Pure Connect or Pure Cloud. And Amazon Connect or any of these systems uh, do require, of course, the, the, the build out of the behaviors. The underlying connections to your back end systems need to, be, uh, need to be rebuilt. But once that's done, we're standing there with all your test cases already generated. We want to be there for that test driven development, get things stood up quickly, get things verified incrementally, and get a voice quality test done so that you know that your environment is compatible with that cloud because there, there are some hiccups there. Of course, we have Cruncher, so you can do a, a pressure test. And finally, you can launch and do the monitoring that uh, you know is so important to make sure that all the systems that you've integrated into the Cloud Contact Center are working and the responsiveness and, and correctness is, is there 24 hours a day. So that's kind of our approach to, to, to migrating, but we're going to continue to invest here. And um, you know the ways in which we're offering uh, services into this space is kind of like a three-course meal. There's the getting you in there, uh, replicating your IVR, and accelerating your migration, and getting to a, a quality spot for the cutover. But then there's that ongoing testing of the customer experience and the agent experience, all the way from self-service from the call arrival, all the way through to you know the agent, the correct agent, the context transferred to that correct agent. That end-to-end -end validation of the customer journey is really important, and velocity and pulse are being upgraded to achieve that goal for you in the cloud. Finally, you know you need to see it at load. Um, perhaps the clouds are way over provisioned, um, and and you're less worried about. Uh, being able to handle customer traffic, but getting all your agents logged in and doing all that they need to do and having a productive contact center is really important. The infrastructure on your end needs to work, and that agent testing and scale is enabled now with enhancements that we're doing that allow Cruncher and our voice quality modules to work in that cloud contact center environment. So that's really um, you know the, the, the whole three-course meal. That's where we're going for. Um, we're on that journey. Uh, we're not there yet. We've made some big inroads with Amazon and, and Genesis. And we've got some available functionality. Amazon Connect, we've got a great uh, migration accelerator. Um, we'll continue to invest and make it better. Uh, we've got support advertised for our virtual agents on Genesis Pure Cloud and Pure Engage Cloud. Uh, but we're not stopping there, where the engineers are investing uh, right now for customers that are going to Twilio Flex, CX1, for example. Those are, those are important uh, uh, things that are going to pop later this year. And we've also, you know, not forgetting things like Pure Connect and, and uh, Ring Central. And we're going to be listening to the market and hearing. And, and if, if you know you have a um, cloud contact center environment that you're thinking about adopting, we'd love to hear about it because we want to be there for you when you're ready. It may not happen this month, but it'll, it'll happen sooner or later, in our opinion. I want to switch now to a, a, an even meatier topic, which is agile and DevOps. Um, we want to be there. Um, we think we're not everything. There's a lot of technology. There's a lot of tools. There's a lot of things that have to do that are, that are outside the technology realm with organization and processes and mentality of, of how you work every day to really you know, bear the fruit. But the, but the rewards are huge. Um, we think we fit into this role of enabling the rapid change by bringing automation. Right? Automation is incredibly important. And the CX applications, whether they be an IVR, routing strategies, a chatbot, these things need and often are delivered incrementally now. And uh, you know, avoiding risky big bangs means you need to be able to automate your and, and run those test regressions multiple times a day, multiple times a week at least. 
the test automation we provide is foundational, right? And, and it's not just foundational for the software development life, life cycle, but for the, uh, uh, the, the vigilance you need to have for um, 24 by 7 operations. So that monitoring aspect is really critical as well. We think we, we fit in uh, reasonably well. We've made some investments this year I'd like to highlight. You can see um, that we've uh, announced support for Splunk, ServiceNow, PagerDuty, and Jira. And these are, this is a nice smattering of, of, of different uh, systems that are, that are used for, by our customers. We've heard these from your customers. We, of course, have some great partners in Prod and Blackchair who have integrated with us similarly. And they fit into that configuration management realm, realm for cloud contact centers and contact centers. And then uh, many of you know that we've had an HP ALM integration for a long time. And Microfocus has purchased a, a quality center. So we've got that legacy integration as well. But we're making inroads into a lot of different areas. And it's important for us to consider all the ways in which CR can bring business value. And we'd like to be a part of um, you know, the agile transformation. We'd like to be uh, pushing defects uh, to be tracked and, and maybe accessorizing uh, defects with additional information as the test results roll in. We'd like to help and participate with the agile planning. We'd like our test cases to be attached to stories. And um, you know, test management frameworks, uh, of course, we've always wanted to be plugged into those. And we'll continue to invest uh, just like we did with ALM. The DevOps side, there's continuous integration. The CI, CD tool chains, really important to us. Something that we've been supporting for many years with our, with our APIs, um, but we're doing a better job documenting them now, now. And uh, you know, configuration management, uh, feeding data from Pulse downstream to reporting and dashboarding systems, and uh, t turning our um, you know, incidents that we're alerting on into tickets that have information that are useful for the uh, folks that can actually fix things. So this is a broad, broad range, of course. The integrations are, are really, really important to us. We need to fit into an, an, an ecosystem of uh, Agile and DevOps transformation. And, and that's a really important aspect. So there's a bunch of tools out there we think we've, uh, we've empowered ourselves to go out and, and integrate with. There's a broad range of possibilities. We're open to hearing and, and listening to the market and reacting to what's out there and being used. Um, I'd like to move into you know how how is it that we are, we hope to achieve all these things? Well, one of the hows here is really um, pairing our technology, which started with REST APIs, and now we've added something uh, a new component called the Integration Hub. Which more on that in a second. Um, but beyond the technology, we're trying to package up our best practices. So how is it that? The Ciara best fits with Jira. How is it that you know the, the the best integration with Splunk can be achieved? So we'd like to package up those best practices in integration scripts that are highly configurable and some documentation to support that. And then finally, we want to pair that with some consultative services. We want to enable our partners, of course, to to uh, deliver those integrations and customize them. But we also want our our, our uh, customer delivery team to be able to take uh, and, and make a customer organization successful in integrating their, their, their various CI and CD tool chains and, and, uh, and monitoring systems with CR to get the most out of their investment with the CR platform. We're going to do this by moving away from our typical approach. Over here on the left, we would typically, for many years, have APIs that support CI and CD tool, tool chain. Every time an age, uh, a, a software developer checks in new code, we can be part of a validation of reintegration and validate the integration environment. Every time you do a deployment, we can stand at the ready to, to validate that environment within seconds or minutes. And that's you know kind of the way we've been going to market. But now we've got this idea of an integration script, this idea that it embodies you know, the best practices in the best possible way. And it's a, it's a piece of middleware that can sit in the middle between us and the other system, watching that system, watching us, and exchanging information and events at just the right rate. So what we'd like to do is be able to pull those things out, instantiate them for you um, as an extension to the Ciara platform. And to achieve that, we've added an integration hub, which is our runtime environment for executing these particular integrations that are work for you in your environment. And the, we're really proud of the, the integration hub because it, it, it enables a lot of reactivity. And we expect to extend and um, you know, make available to you this, this component either in our cloud or on your premise, wherever it needs to live for InfoSec reasons. There's a lot of new information out 
Um, we've got a documentation problem, so we've created an, an, an environment. Um, there's a breakout session at 11.30 today that's going to go into these integrations in a little more depth. Uh, and there you're actually going to see some of the integrations, uh, how you configure them, and how we document them. And we, we've, we've um, you know, shared a new body of knowledge called Developer Central. Um, it's a place where you can meet and, and uh, um, bring together all of the information that, that you have. So we're happy to you know, learn from you. But we're putting everything we've got out here, all of our documentation, our use cases, all our how-tos, and our reference information for all of our APIs. So everything that we could possibly think the developer might want to achieve the best results, that's what developer.cr.com is going to be. All right. Next area, world-class customer experiences. There's a lot of ways people go in this direction. There's a lot of information that we have that we'd like to bring to bear and, and bring business value. Um, the first one is functional testing. Um, we're seeing some awesome accomplishments already. We've got this Velocity product that we introduced uh, uh, just about two years ago this week. Um, we've, you know, we started with, with a vision of design-driven testing, which is uh, you know, anchored by this notion of model-based testing. If you can build a model that describes the thing you want to test, let Ciara generate the test cases, let Ciara uh, provide you a higher level, easier to use uh, customer experience editor. So we're seeing some great, great work. Um, of course, Velocity's gone through a transformation of, you know, from a, from a, you know, a, a 0 0.9 product at introduction to a 1.0 to a 1.2, and now the team has been doing such a great job. You have to go see it in the in the demo. It's 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 awesome. But I just want to call out, a, a, you know, a few customers that are doing great things out there with our platform today. I'm so you know, appreciative of, of the hard work that goes in, in uh, on top of what we've done. Um, companies like Microsoft have done some really great work at, at, at model-based testing and building large, complex CX models, the biggest ones we're aware of in the world. Uh, we've got um, companies like eBay, uh, Satya at, at the Ideathon on Monday, he was talking about the, uh, very passionately about how uh, if you're going to go bother to do automation, um, you don't want to just automate the customer experience. You don't want to just automate the uh, the, the, the routing. Uh, don't do this automation stuff in a silo. Take the whole customer journey. You'll find a whole lot more, and you'll get a lot more ROI from testing from self-service all the way through to assisted service. That whole that whole uh, dimension, that second dimension of, of functional testing. Um, and then finally, there's this third dimension that I'm really excited about, and. Crystal uh, from Ajiro was talking uh, yesterday uh, about this, right? Uh, they're, they're running test cases that start with a voice call, move to an SMS that's a one-time SMS. Um, they, uh, the person clicks on the SMS, and, the, and, the, and, they, and they move their conversation from the voice channel into a web channel. So that visual IVR use case, and many others like it, have multiple channels of customer interaction happening simultaneously, perhaps smooth handoffs, perhaps not so smooth handoffs between the channels. And that's why omnichannel testing is so important. And, and we're really excited that you know um, we met with Bob Selvon at, at Ajiro at the, at the previous exchange and uh, got to talking at, at the end of the second day. And we were able to turn around and, and provide something uh, in the July-August time frame that they were able to begin using to uh, you know, test something that really wasn't being tested. Um, so this multi-channel testing and the handoffs between the channels, really exciting stuff. But we want to go further. And we've been investing in velocity. I want to tell you about some of the great things that allow us to go even further. Um, there's a bunch of work that we've done around modeling business logic, about testing all the different use cases, about all the different data scenarios that get you into different complexities. And co complexity management is a lot about what functional testing is about. So we've been able to come up with a way to express and attach the test data and the data scenarios that you need to our customer experience model and allow you to crawl through those different examples to make sure that the things are working correctly and, and take in the current behaviors. Or you can describe this behavior and generate all the test cases and all the data fed test cases that you need. Um, I mentioned earlier about migration acceleration. That involves a lot of support for import and export. There's some things that are that are in beta that are popping now for, for pure cloud. There's some stuff that have shown great results with Amazon Connect. And we're, we're going to continue to invest in not only the scenario where you lift and load your current IVR into a cloud environment, but also the scenario where you've gone and done some 
uh, design and implementation work in that environment, you want to pull back into, into Ciara the exact definition of, of, of your contact center and let us generate test cases from the work that you've done there. We, we, we want to handle both of those cases. Um, when you get it into Ciara, you're in our customer experience editor, the CX editor, and we've done a complete re-optimization, a complete rewrite. I'm so proud of the engineering team uh, we've got here for you today to look at an editor that's running 10 times faster than it was uh, a few months ago, and they had a great, great work in, in this rewrite, and we've also slipped in a capability to, to break the model apart into different modules, uh, just like on a Visio uh, tabbed environment, that sort of thing, you can break the canvas into smaller bite-sized chunks uh, for more modularization. So I think we've done a lot for scalability. We can handle the biggest IVRs that we, we've ever heard of, and then some. Uh, so I think we're, we're, we're really into, you know, the, the, uh, the ability to do model-based testing at scale. Coming up in 2020, um, you're going to see a lot of work in the test data management realm. I appreciate Gautier's uh, running a, a test data management area. We showed, we showed some things that we're thinking about for integrated editing, um, for modeling the different personas where you can share test data, um, things about updating the, the test data. We, we, we're unpacking a lot of the aspects of test data management, but we know that integrated editing, um, we're now convinced we can do a better job than, than the proverbial Microsoft Excel sheet. Those of you who, who have handled test data scenarios know that getting to test data that enables automation is difficult. Maintaining that data is difficult. And oftentimes, at, at the end, when you really have a full complement of test data, you have thousands of rows in an Excel sheet and you have 60 columns or something like that of all the things, we think we can help ma with the complexity management there and we can also help with keeping the data and the scripts in synchronization. So if it's all done in the portal, we can bring some more value there. Um, we also want to bring some more value with versioning. Of course, the software that uh, we're testing is ultimately you know, managed in a, so in a source code repository with versioning. And of course, we want to have a snapshotting mechanism to be able to handle the, the different things of something's in design, something's in development, and something's been released and is running in production. So that whole versioning concept is something we've got the underpinnings for. And then there's two really exciting things towards the, towards the second part of the year that, I, that I'm really super excited about to work with the team. One is conversational testing, and that gets into really uh, deep coverage, 100% coverage for chatbot intents and natural language IVR. It turns, over, there's, turns out there's some crossover there. And then collaboration, right? We want to expand the realm of collaboration that you can do with Velocity. Velocity is really good about uh, helping uh, tie back to the design and, and, and anchoring development and, and testing back to design. But we want to provide business value right to the design community and right to the business and allow them to work in, in concert um, more tightly. So I'm going to say a little bit more about these last two because I'm so excited about conversational testing and collaboration. Um, chatbots, really important developing area growing much faster than IVR space. Investments in chatbots are starting to pop. Um, there's a lot of chatbots out there that aren't very good, so we think we can help, right? Um, so we're very carefully preparing. Uh, we've, we've formed a, a, a chatbot assurance team. Um, we can produce um, synthetic test data, just like Diego was talking about yesterday up here. Uh, we have something called the conversation multiplier that can uh, augment the testing data that you would generate manually or that you would pull from production. Um, we think we have a, an, an architecture that can execute very quickly many, many different uh, variations of any, all, you know, human, human speech, right, natural language. You can express yourself in so many different ways. So that aspect of many variations is important for us for our scalability. Well, we've been working on that, those kinds of things of, you know, data-driven testing for years. So it's something we can bring to bear on the chatbot problem. Um, we want to track results in our reports across many iterations. Customers are telling us that when they form chatbot teams, they're almost always doing agile delivery. They usually put out uh, an MVP very early. It doesn't do very well because it only does a few things. But they're learning and they're iterating and they want uh, you know, to track their progress towards higher and higher accuracy. So we want to be a part of that. We also want to help with the collaboration aspect and bringing in subject matter experts who know the business, know how they should be conducting conversations with the customer um, and make that easy. Um, you know, we, we don't want to have a tool for just the development community. We want a tool for the folks that are concerned about how, to, how the brand is being represented in the chat channel. 
Um, and we, we found some wonderful, um, by studying chatbots, we've learned some things about how we can do natural language coverage for IBRs in the voice channel as well. So that's super excited. And adjacent area uh, also of, of velocity is collaboration and visualization. There's a number of things uh, where we can shift left, shift much further left, where we want to bring together the existing technical user community with the design and the business communities. We want to allow stakeholders to be interviewed and captured their, their results. We want comments flowing, um, conversations and uh, tasks or to-dos being assigned. Um, we've got, we've got the, the role of potentially facilitating design reviews uh, within the UX community and with business leaders. And so those kinds of uh, reviews and maybe the sample dialogues that you could pull out of the system to say, here's a conversation. Does this make sense? Before we ask the team to start writing a lot of code and do a lot of testing, is this even exactly the conversation you want to have? So a little bit of user acceptance testing outside of the stakeholders. And I've been part of a lot of scenarios where the, the stakeholders and the business and the contact center management said, I want it exactly like this. And the user community didn't get it. So there's a lot of usability kind of feedback that we can facilitate. And we can also facilitate some recording script management with the studios where scripts go back and forth. And we can load the audio to, to augment the, the quality of those sample dogs. We can actually hear the audio. You don't just see the, the back and forth, but you can hear it if it's an IVR. So this is a wonderful area for velocity expansion. Super excited about this. I hope to be able to show you some really great things at Exchange next year. But this is the direction we're going. And I hope you can see we're really committed to velocity as, as an extension to our platform. Switching to production monitoring and Pulse, um, I'm, again, seeing some just some wonderful things. We've, we've made some investments in Pulse. It's allowed you to do monitoring in all the different channels we support, voice, web, chat, email, SMS. And you can put those all up on dashboards and, and, and be vigilant across your cu entire customer experience. You can um, put together dashboards for different teams. You can have an executive level. You can have a technician level. You can have management level uh, dashboards. And, and we've noticed people putting these things up on wall boards in network operations centers, putting them up on different management uh, desktops to, uh, to get the data that that, uh, that manager needs for his or her role. And then we've, we've launched. Um, uh, a iOS and Android application called Pulse Mobile, and uh, it, it you know I showed it here at Exchange uh, uh, last year. We've launched it. It's now up to version 2.2, and it's it's uh, re received uh, some really good response. Um, we see customers doing some really advanced things now too. We've got service steps. They can probe behind the scenes. They don't have to settle for just the normal outside in stuff where we're you know, um, judging the end customer experience or the end agent experience. They're also able to probe into systems to say, uh, are things the way they should be, right? Did that, did that data actually arrive at it? Or they can reach in and reset the, the, the balance back to zero or whatever they, whatever they need to do. So they're doing some really advanced things, and they're, and they're coming up with, with more and more instrumentation points. So they're able to identify the specific failure point because they're doing end-to-end um, -end journeys to different points in, in, in the flow of the, of, of the call. So it's really wonderful to find the customers that are using Pulse to do these kinds of advanced things. But of course, we want to go further, and we have. Uh, we've recently, uh, as I may have mentioned earlier, um, done some ticketing system integrations. We've done ServiceNow. Uh, we've done PagerDuty. Um, but we've also added this really cool feature where you can talk about an incident before it goes to a ticket. So now the team that's in Ciara can converse about an incident and decide whether or not is it a problem with the test case or is it a problem with the experience. Is that experience you know, indicative of, of something that should be a networking ticket or a telephony ticket, right? Because there's different teams. So before that ticket gets opened, there's some messaging that we've added. And coming up, we want to add to that list of tech, ticketing integrations. So we want to hear from you what, what you use for your ticketing systems. We know about Jira. We know about Remedy. We know about ServiceNow, but we're, we're always open to learning. Um, and then the big, big opportunity, and we, we got into talking about this at, at, at Ideathon, and I think there was a lot of good energy about this, um, helping people get to the figuring out what's wrong. Like, it's really easy for Pulse to, to, to find fault. It's kind of judgy. But, it, it, but, but, but our, next, <laughs> our next goal is really to help you get past that you have a problem to you have a problem here. 
right? And, and um, you know, so there are manual troubleshooting steps we can distribute with the alerts that are relevant, and we can do automated troubleshooting. And that automated troubleshooting is a big journey we're going to be on for the next couple of years, but we've got some really great ideas, and we're going to be investing in, the, in, in 2020 in this, in this area. So really excited about what we can do in terms of adding value and really allowing you to get to that resolution status on an incident faster. <clears throat> Lastly, we're going to be feeding into CX Insights, and I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to talk about CX Insights, so stay tuned. I'm only a couple of slides away. I, I, first, want to, I first want to justify why we did CX Insights, uh, first and foremost. Pulse is great. Pulse has got you know, wonderful dashboards. They're highly configurable. We've got customers uh, doing faster and faster operational response. Um, with, the, with the output of these things. We've got alerts coming, uh, native alerts coming to Android and iOS. We've got wallboards and you know, graphical displays all around. And, and that's wonderful for you know, the, the near term. But everything you see over here, it, it, it's, it's really just the last couple of days, sometimes only the last eight hours. Depending on how you configure these things, you might be able to get a few days out of this, but you're not going to get that bigger picture, right? And so we think there's a world beyond Pulse a world where the data that we've been collecting in our database for many, many years, for many of you, um, is not being you know, mined for good intelligence, right? Um, there's a world beyond the recent results of the last eight hours, and there's a bigger picture that has patterns and, and uh, you know, uh, data that allow you to make much more strategic decisions on how you invest, how you might organize, how you might train your staff, where you spend your money in the, in the next year's budgeting. We want to be able to uh, you know, allow you to use the Pulse data. And we'd also like you to correlate the Pulse data with other sources of data that you might have that show uh, correlation or perhaps an anti-correlation. So ultimately, we get to you know, looking at all of the Pulse data, we can, we can come up with an understanding about what's normal for you and maybe call out abnormal situations when there's a statistically valid uh, deviation from normal. And that is what brings us to CX Insights. It's your big advantage for being a Pulse customer. And we're really, really excited to introduce CX Insights today. And I have with me a product manager who's joined, uh, Nivedita, Nivedita Tripathi. And Nivedita is the product manager for CX Insights. And you're going to see um, a very important set of um, I'm going to have her tell a story. Diego suggested yesterday that your minds work better if we deliver our story, our information as a story. So the, look for the story as Nivedita takes us through. Um, we're going to go through CX Insights, but you're going to see that she can test her theories um, with uh, statistically significant data sets that have been amassed by Pulse Running for a long time, um, and we imported into into this data warehouse. And she's able to use it and slice and dice and, and, and make some judgments about where money should be spent and, and uh, perhaps provide a level of deeper understanding about what the performance of her organization might be. So I've asked her to, pl to, to role play. Um, and uh, she is Angela for today. So take it away, Angela. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela. And I'm a senior business analyst at Assure Bank. And uh, I support business and technical operations team, and my teams work daily on a daily basis on Pulse Alerts. Oh, an alert? An alert from Ciara CX Insights? We just got Ciara CX Insights a few days ago, and here it is, alerting me about anomaly in my system. Interesting. Our hope with CX Insights was that it will help us identify and eliminate the issues proactively much before the customers are impacted. And it's already reporting anomalies in my system. Incredible. Let's see what the anomaly is. Oh, it seems like there was a recent deviation, and I observed an anomaly in my call, call completion rate. Interesting. I wonder what call completion rate is. To me, it's if I recall correctly, it seems like a statistical average of my call completions, my customer journeys executed in Pulse. Interesting. Let me quickly look at CX Insights and see what it has to say. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I can see there's, uh, it, CX Insights shows me call completion rates for last seven days. 
That is pretty cool. So the green band here shows me an optimum range. And I can see that there is a huge dip in my call completion rate on 22nd of October. That's yesterday. And uh, on the other side, in the voice quality trends, I can also see that that's exactly when there's a dip in the voice quality as well. Could they be related? I don't know. Let's check it out. And let me quickly also think as to what could be a possible cause of this dip, this anomaly that I'm observing here. My initial thought is that it has something to do with increased call volumes, but I'm not sure. I have got to investigate this further. Let me quickly take a deep stab at it, investigate this further. Ooh, I'm an analytical workbench, and I see my daily call completion rate, and this is a call completion on an hourly basis. It's been shown for 22nd of October. And in order to understand, to evaluate my theory, my assumption, my hypothesis, let me quickly pull up my Genesis call volume and see how they correlate. This is incredible. I just don't believe my hypothesis just got validated. I can clearly see that there's a huge spike in my Genesis call volume at around 4 p.m. yesterday. That's exactly when there was a huge dip in the call completion rate. This is a very good piece of information. And now I also wonder what could be possible reason to this increased call volumes. Maybe there's a change in my business decisions that has led to the increased call volumes, potentially. And is the volume further going to grow? Maybe. And is our system capable enough to support this increased call volume? And is the anomaly re reported due to the system constraints? Possibly. I'm not the best person, but I'm certainly wanting to share this information with my CIO, with my chief customer officer, with my technical operations team to take a deep stab at it. All right. So since I'm already in CX Insights, let me also quickly take a look at the predictions feature Ciara told me about and see what's in store for me in the next 30 days. There you go. So Ciara's predictions shows me test case failures for the next 30 days. And it seems pretty much like it's being derived out of my historical information. Pretty cool. What do I see here? Uh, it seems like it's trying to show me the highly probable and the medium probable uh, test, test case failures. And it certainly shows me test case information deep down to the step, test step level. So it shows me this particular test case is going to fail at test step six. That's pretty cool. And it also shows me additional information regarding my failure, the failure type, description, and customers impacted. So Ciara is going to provision us and define, help us define how, what kind of customers we want to have. So maybe I can categorize my customers as gold, silver, bronze, etc. So it's going to certainly show me what all customers would be impacted if I have this failure in my system. That's very interesting. And let me also see what happens if I click here. Oh, it's redirecting me to Ciara portal. <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> so I can go to step number six, and I can certainly see what's in store for me, what's going to fail. So my step number six, that's regarding main menu options, that's going to fail with a high probability. Wow. And this is something, a piece of information. I think it's good if I share this with my infrastructure, IT infrastructure team, my CIO, so that they can deal with this, these failures and prevent them from actually happening in future. So let me quickly do that. All right. So. With Ciara CX Insights, I have been able to discover my current experiences, my current system performance, and also I'm getting very deep insights of my future failures. That is something I would have otherwise not been able to uncover. So this is pretty incredible. Thank you, CX Insights. Thank you, Ciara. And thank you, Angela. That was, that was awesome. <laughs>
hopefully, hopefully the storyline, um, you know, un uncovered a few things. Let's just uh, let's just unpack a, a few wonderful things. Uh, uh, first, uh, a big thank you to you, uh, Nivedita. It's been wonderful working with you, but also with the team. Uh, there's an engineering team uh, spanning from Melbourne, Australia to Pune, India, uh, backing this up and building this right now. And you're actually seeing a prototype of the, of the product. Now, it's not ready yet for shipment, but I could not not share something that cool with you. Um, and so we're hoping to prepare that for early next year. And uh, stay tuned with your, your account executive because this thing is going to be awesome, right? It'll let you combine uh, the wealth of information that's streaming off of Pulse with your selected data sources, whether it be call counts, estimated wait time, uh, customer satisfaction, NPS scores. So you can now investigate the correlation between, hey, if, if the customer experience was bad, do people think less of us now? So you can actually put those correlations up and see leading and trailing indicators and things like that. Um, another thing that uh, you know, uh, Angela showed for us is that the anomaly detection algorithm is always running, whether she's sleeping or in a meeting or what have you. Uh, it's always on, and it's it's reaching out when it when it arrives at something statistically interesting. Um, the also the the failure prediction algorithm is always running and looking at all the past results to predict uh, future failures. So this is uh, you know a, a very different kind of uh, product. It is an addition to the CRO platform uh, for Pulse adopters, but anybody who who has adopted Pulse, you'll be able to take all the data you've generated with Pulse um, from your platform into um, CX Insights. There's a wealth of information in this thing. We've got a lot of metrics in here. Um, there's um, yearly, weekly, monthly, daily averages. You can put these things on different dashlets on your home page. Um, it's a wonderfully configurable um, environment for what's important for you and your job. Um, and we think that the, the dozens of metrics that we have will let you find and investigate lots of different theories and, and you know, motivate investments uh, within you know, the larger consensus building thing. So you can bring data uh, with, uh, with um, you know, confidence that you know, you're bringing empirical observations done by Sierra Pulse. But wait, there's one more thing that I want to disclose. <laughs> In addition to all, all that Angela told you about, I want to invite you into the power of the CX community that we want to form around CX Insights. And the idea here is that we see a lot of data, right? And <clears throat> as Sierra running the Sierra Cloud, we see a ton of, of you know, good and bad customer behaviors. We see a lot, a lot of folks that are overachievers, and we see folks that could really use some lessons on how to catch up. We try to have um, some executive briefings with you guys. We have weekly meetings with many of you. Um, there's a number of, uh, you know, experiments that the customer success team and the product management team has been conspiring on slowly with a few of you over the last six months. And we've noticed that this operational CX sort of um, uh, comparison uh, does motivate some, some exciting um, response in, in folks, right? Because people are naturally kind of a little competitive. And if we can come to you and say, hey, the other folks in the, in the, in the same industry as you, the same insurance industry, the same medical industry, the same uh, you know, retail industry, um, uh, are, are achieving um, not as good a scores, you can feel good about your achievement. Uh, or perhaps you need to catch up to those, those groups. We also do regional and country um, uh, aggregations with our data warehouse. And we can you know, put up these operational CX or OCX voice metrics up along with the exact uh, averages. Now, when we're, when we're computing these averages, we aren't looking, of course, at, the, at, at what you're doing in your test cases. We aren't even actually importing the test cases themselves. We're importing the results, right? So we're looking at things like how much does the, do the calls complete, right? So how often do you actually achieve a full journey by your customer? If it's 100%, you're golden, right? But, you know, things you know, kind of happen. So here's, here's an example of a way you can bring data uh, to, to motivate further investment uh, with, with the larger community that, that you're a part of. So that is something I want to invite you to participate in. Uh, you opt in to contribute your data. Um, and as a result, you get back um, this comparison of your data uh, with your peer groups. So this is such an important and transformative uh, introduction 
uh, that we've re, uh, we redone the architecture slide that I showed you at the beginning, right? And now we really think that the, that the underpinnings of the Ciara world are data services, right? These operational CX metrics that I was just talking about, the benchmarks that we compute from aggregated data, our predictive analytics algorithm that's using machine learning, looking at the data and finding the patterns and finding um, you know, the things that, that uh, we can quantify as likely future occurrences. Uh, and then, of course, constantly understanding what's normal for this hour, for this day, for this week, for this month. Right? We have seasonal businesses. Everybody knows they have patterns. Those patterns aren't exactly followed. We don't want people to get uh, up in arms. But when there is a, there is a statistically significant deviation, we want to be able to bring those uh, uh, anomalies to your attention. And then finally, we're going to protect data like, like nobody's business. We're really investing as we go from SOC 2 Type 1 to SOC 2 Type 2 certification this year. You'll find that you know, uh, we're taking um, you know, data privacy concerns very seriously as we manipulate the, the, the data into these forms to, to achieve these things. Of course, all the, all the great stuff with the platform and, and with uh, the applications are good, but we've also made a big investment in the, in the integration space, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, more on that at 11.30 in the breakout, um, but we've taken the RESTful APIs and put this integration hub above it and uh, hope, hope to do great things with you. So I'm going to wrap up now, but I really want to invite you all to boldly embrace the transformations that are ahead, and we want to be a part of those transformations. So tell us what scares you. Tell us where we can help. Where would you like a little bit of an insurance policy? Where are those things that, that, that maybe on, on, on the journey you see ahead of for yourself, um, you know, we, we, we can help as your insurance platform provider? And you know, we're, we're of course ready for your move to the cloud um, when you're ready. Um, we're, of course, happy to help and accelerate your journey. Uh, almost everybody's on some sort of agile ado uh, adoption path and DevOps path, dev path, but we want to help out. And then finally, we want you to be able to say yes to your next disruptive uh, and uh, change, whether it's chatbot, whether it, it's uh, omni-channel journeys that span, um, you know, those things that, are, that, that maybe sound crazy that are coming from the business or coming um, from, you know, the enthusiastic uh, colleague. Remember that Ciara is here to help you mitigate the risks of those big disruptive changes. And with that, I thank you all for your attention. It's been wonderful disclosing wh where we're headed a a a as, as a product uh, and, and platform. And talk to me afterwards. I'm happy to hear all of your great plans for world-class customer experience.